Harmonious brushless motor controller can not only be used in servo applications, but also in traditional velocity control systems, and even in systems where it is necessary to switch between the two modes on the fly. It can be used in compliant or underactuated systems where external torques may temporarily exceed the torque that can be applied via the motor. This video shows a new configurable feature that can be used to improve the recovery response of the controller when an external torque saturates it, causing a divergence between the actual velocity and the intended control velocity. Looking at the reference manual, it has some words on use in velocity control applications, the important part of which is to use max position slip. I'll take a Modius developer kit and configure it for velocity mode by setting max position slip to a relatively small value, say 0.2 revolutions. I'll also set the position bounds to be both NAN, which would be typical for a velocity control application. For the last configuration change, I'll set the position PID parameters. We'll raise the KD value and lower the KP value so that it's smaller relative to it. In velocity control applications, this is usually a good tuning balance and will also prevent some unintended interactions with the new feature we'll be demonstrating later. Next, I'll plot some values. The measured velocity is estimated from the primary position sensor. The control velocity is the internally interpolated velocity that obeys any in effect acceleration or velocity limits. And the command velocity is the value we are commanding, which will change instantaneously as new commands are sent. To get a faster update rate, I'll manually enter tell rate servo stats 10 to update it at 10 milliseconds pull rate instead of the default 100 milliseconds, and I'll set the display time window to 5 seconds to show more short-term detail. With those values plotted, I'll command a fixed velocity trajectory with limited acceleration and a limited maximum torque of 0.15 newton meters. That torque is more than enough to move and accurately control the unloaded motor, while still safe to restrain by hand. We can see the motor spin up at the commanded acceleration limit and hold our speed of 9 Hz. Now I'll apply an external torque with my hand to slow the motor down. We can see the measured speed go to zero, while the command and control velocity are still at the commanded value of 9. When I release my hand, the motor rapidly attempts to resume the commanded speed, frequently overshooting with some oscillation. Eventually it does stabilize back at the commanded speed. We'll do that a few more times so that you can see the range of responses. Some of them are clearly uh, happening faster than even the 10 milliseconds pull rate but in some we're able to see the overshoot and the oscillation. I'll stop that and then show how the new parameter can be used. We'll head back into the parameters and set max velocity slip equal to 1 Hz. When setting this it needs to be significantly larger than any expected noise in the measured velocity. With the developer kit and factory settings the typical noise is well below 1 Hz so this should be fine. Other than the noise constraint, lower values will typically yield better transient improvement. With that value set, I'll repeat the previous experiment. I'll send the initial command and watch the motor spin up. Now I'll restrain it with my hand down to zero speed. Here we can now see that the control velocity has dropped down and is hovering around 1 Hz. When I release my hand, the motor gradually spins back up following our commanded acceleration limit. Note that unlike before, there is no significant overshoot, oscillation, or pulsing. Do that a few more times and see what happens even as the motor is restrained to above zero but below the maximum speed, it always comes back up to the uh, using the commanded acceleration limit. That's it. Max Velocity Slip is a small standalone feature that improves the performance of any of the Modius motor controllers in yet more fields of application. If your controller doesn't already have the feature, go look up the instructions in the reference manual on how to download and flash the most recent firmware. It's compatible with all current and past controllers. Thanks.